For the Clarity Crew, I'm Kirk Gebhards, and the theme of Anchored is the Passion Week of Jesus Christ. May 26, 1941, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, he is preparing the nation for the inevitable war in the European front, and he comments to those that were disinclined to enter that war because they were unsure of its relevance for our nation. He says this famously, quote, to those that would not admit the possibility of the approaching storm, the last few weeks have brought to them the shattering of many illusions. In fact, today, Western civilization is facing our own version of the shattering of many illusions. What illusions? That we're strong enough, that we're powerful enough, that we're advanced enough to circumvent the sufferings of the ages. The truth is, is that we aren't. And the entire world is being brought to its disease by this mutant swarm. You see, we like things the way that we want to see them. An untold upheaval comes from the shattering of many illusions. So also for Passion Week, 2,000 years ago for Jesus Christ. It started in such an extraordinarily positive way and ended in such a stunningly awful way. Whereas on Sunday, Palm Sunday, thousands of Jews welcomed Jesus into Jerusalem. They were celebrating him. And those cheers turned to jeers on Friday. Shouts of Hosanna turned to cries for his blood be on our heads. What brought about this extraordinary reversal? The weather vane of popular opinion that week for Jesus Christ must have lost some feathers as it spun 180 degrees and faced due south, because by the end of the week, he was public enemy number one when he was celebrated almost universally by the Jews five days prior. So again, what changed? You see, almost everybody loves the idea of a gracious and powerful deliverer, but many people hate the idea of a sovereign king who's authoritative. And Jesus wants people to know that he is a powerful and gracious Savior, but also King of kings and Lord of lords. And so he spends Monday and Tuesday underscoring his authority. And we were taught yesterday how on Monday he went into the temple and cleansed it so that he would establish his authority in God's house of worship. And Tuesday can be titled like a boss because the entire day is filled with illustrations of his authority over nature, his authority religiously, and his authority over all matters. In fact, it's such an extraordinary day, it takes up almost one-sixth of the entire Gospel of Matthew. From Matthew 21, verse 20 through 26, verse 5, this day is filled with illustrations of Jesus teaching on his authority. As he strolls over the Mount of Olives from Bethany to Jerusalem in the morning, he passed, passes the withered fig tree that shows his authority over nature. And then he rolls into the temple like he owns the place because he is setting up shop to teach for the day. And he engages the Gentiles and he teaches parables of authority like the parable of the king's wedding feast and parable of the vineyard owner where his authority is pronounced again. He confounds the scribes that were trying to trick him when he teaches on and, and, and underscores his authority by teaching them on taxes and teaching them on the great commandment. And really at the pinnacle of his pronouncement of his, authorities, of his authority comes at the end of chapter 22 and 23 where he pronounces the woes against the Pharisee. But right before he does that, he claims the lordship of God on his life out of David's prophecy in Psalm 110. And when he did that, verse 46 of chapter 22 says, no one would dare speak to him anymore or ask him any more questions. His authority was established all day long. And it was his authority that people hated. And it was his authority that shattered many illusions of what they wanted God to be like. But you see, God defines for himself what he is like. So the question isn't how will you respond to Jesus' offer of salvation more than it is, how will you respond to Jesus' offer of his authority? Philippians 2, 9, 10, and 11 say that God has highly exalted Jesus and given him the name above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, everyone in heaven, on earth, and under the earth would confess the name of Jesus, and that every tongue would confess Jesus Christ as Lord to the glory of God the Father. 
He is king, master, and lord. Psalm 2 verse 12 says, Kiss the son lest he be angry with you and you perish in the way. Kissing the son in Psalm 2 was kissing the signet ring with a sign of submission. Will you submit to the authority of Jesus Christ and receive his saving grace? My friend Charles Spurgeon helps us on this theme of God's sovereignty and authority. And I'll quote from Chuck now. There is no attribute more comforting to his children than that of God's sovereign authority. Under the most adverse circumstances, in the most severe trials, they believe that sovereignty has ordered their afflictions, that sovereignty overrules them, and that sovereignty will sanctify them all. There is nothing for which the children ought more earnestly to contend than the doctrine of their master over all creation, the kingship of God over all the works of his hands, the throne of God and his right to sit on that throne. On the other hand, there is no doctrine more hated by worldlings, no truth of which they have made such a game as the great stupendous yet most certain doctrine of the sovereignty of infinite Jehovah. Men will allow God to be everywhere except on his throne. But we proclaim an enthroned God and his right to do as he wills with his own, to dispose of his creatures as he thinks well, without consulting them in the matter, and it is then that we are hissed and execrated and that men turn a deaf ear to us. For the God on his throne is not the God that they want, but it is the God that is true. And it is the God upon his throne that we love to preach. And it is God upon his throne whom we trust. And so, will you trust in the Lord Jesus Christ as the powerful, gracious deliverer and the authoritative sovereign of the universe? Will you turn to him and magnify his great name? Because we're called this Passion Week to embrace and enjoy the sovereignty and authority of Jesus Christ. If you will do that, you will recognize his saving grace overflows your life and his authority protects you like a banner of kindness and power. And so this Passion Week, Enjoy the authority of Jesus Christ and know all the blessings that come with it. For the Clarity Crew, I'm Kurt Kevards. Be encouraged, be challenged, be clear.